Oh, hi there! Welcome to Lego Space. Hang on. Let me get a little closer. Behind me is the Discovery and the Hubble Space Telescope. For those who are unfamiliar with what it is, the Discovery is one of six space shuttles created for the American Space Shuttle Program, or their STS, from 1981 to 2011. It has flown to space more than any other craft, has spent the longest time in space, and has carried more crew members in total. The Hubble Telescope is the world's first space-based optical telescope, and is still being used today, a pivotal tool in our discovery of the final frontier. It was launched from the Discovery Shuttle on 25th of April, 1990. That mission was also known as SCS-31, one of the 135 missions through the American Space Shuttle program. The thing is, this entire program has seen a lot of great feats in space science. The Space Shuttle Columbia flew the longest orbital flight of the shuttle in STS-80, which was 17 days, 21 minutes, and 23 seconds of flight time. During SDS-37, the Atlantis shuttle deployed the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory, which helped discover clouds of antimatter in the Milky Way galaxy. So, with so many amazing accomplishments under its belt, why is STS-31 a big deal? Space shuttles were particularly legendary because they were humankind's first reusable spacecrafts. They were the first spacecrafts in history that can carry huge objects to and from orbit. And reusable spacecrafts mean that they also have economic benefits. Unreusable spacecrafts often throw a lot of space debris as well, resulting in ecological effects too. The five shuttles that were built for the space shuttle program were Enterprise, Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, and the Atlantis. Enterprise was the first orbiter built, but it was for test flights. 12th of April 1981 was when the space shuttle Columbia launched for the first time on mission STS-1 for NASA's space shuttle program. The Columbia completed 27 missions in over 22 years. It helped with several achievements like the first manned space lab mission dedicated to human medical research. However, in February 1st in 2003, the Columbia disintegrated during the re-entry on its 28th mission, resulting in the deaths of all seven crew members. The Columbia isn't the only shuttle that was destroyed during a mission. Challenger, the second orbiter made for the program, launched and landed nine times before disintegrating a mere 73 seconds into its 10th mission. It also killed seven crew members. After two very scary disasters, NASA learned from the past and built three sturdier space shuttles for their program. But of the three, there was one that stood out above the rest the Beyonce of Destiny's Child. That is, the Discovery Shuttle. How did the Discovery beat the odds? Why is this shuttle so tough? The Discovery was a third shuttle made for the program. It was in service for 27 years and landed a total of 39 times. That's more than any other spacecraft to date. Just by tenure alone, the Discovery is already ahead of its peers. But then you factor in the crucial missions it flew, and you can start to see why this shuttle is so important. Unlike single-use rockets, you can't just land a reusable shuttle anywhere like in the movie Gravity when Sandra Bullock lands in the middle of the ocean. Those rockets are theoretically re-unusable. Instead, it's like landing a plane, only it's much heavier and much scarier. And it requires so much math and so much planning and, well, airplane wings. Because of that, a space shuttle was also built more like a plane rather than a rocket. The shuttle even has the rudder that can split to two to act as an air brake on landing. The Discovery has a three-level crew compartment, just like the other shuttles. The decks also have everything you need to fly a shuttle, from buttons to the hatch that connects to the mid bay to the payload bay, which I will show you now.
The shiny radiation panels aren't just to make it look pretty, it's used to reject heat that accumulates because of the sun. Another key feature in this payload bay is this robotic arm. Say hi, robotic arm. It's used for maneuvering payloads outside of the shuttle. So a payload can include cargo, passengers, and other equipment. And this also includes the maneuvering of the Hubble Space Telescope, which was deployed by the Discovery herself. This is the Hubble Space Telescope. On 18 December 1993, the first images of the universe taken by the Hubble were sent to NASA. People gathered around a small monitor to wait for them to load. The anticipation was unbearable. And they were gorgeous. The Hubble has been in space helping us learn more of the universe through their images. Every pixel of every image helped us understand space. It helped us learn about the rate of the expansion of the universe. Thanks to the Hubble, we know that the universe is 13.7 billion years old. The telescope also discovered that every major galaxy is anchored by a black hole at the center and took the iconic photo of the Eagle Nebula, which was later named the Pillars of Creation. In 2015, Hubble observed for the first time a distant exploding star. And yes, it is still there sending us beautiful and vibrant images today. Opening up the shield, you can see the Hubble's telescope main lens. It's got antenna used to send data back to Earth and the solar panels on the side. And because of how huge it is, Dr. Kathy Sullivan, one of the NASA astronauts who was on board of the Hubble mission, said that the telescope took up most of the payload bay space with some adjustments. So these solar rays would have been retracted onto these beams, mm -hmm. and then those beams would be folded up along the side. Sure. And it would all fit down in the cargo bay. Throughout the years, it's gotten refreshes and updates by astronauts to keep the telescope alive and thriving. The Discovery might not be in use anymore, but it's thanks to the strong and spunky shuttle that the Hubble is still there today, a force to be reckoned with 31 years later. After the Discovery's STS-31 mission, there has been plenty of expeditions to space that helped us learn more about what's out there. We have since sent out rovers to Mars, which helped scientists believe that there could have possibly been water in certain areas. Space tech has come so far now that we might even have astronauts living in Mars later, like Matt Damon in that one movie. Space tourism will probably also be a thing in the near future too. Humans have and will find every way to figure out how to do the impossible. Ever since the space shuttles, we've even figured out how to land rockets like this, which would have probably been thought of as impossible back then. I mean, we can even land rockets on a tiny platform in the middle of the ocean. We've come a long way since the first space shuttle flight and the launch of the Hubble. We'll make extraordinary progress even beyond our lifetimes, but in the meantime, isn't it just satisfying to marvel at how far we've come? This is Za. And this is Ray. And this is Lego Za. And we hope that you enjoyed watching the stop motion Lego video because we worked so hard on this. If you don't like this video, I'm going to cry and I'm not going to do stop motion anymore. So remember to support this video. Yep. Yeah. Don't forget to like it or else Ray will cry. Oh. This Lego set has an insane build of 2,354 pieces and it's a 170th scale of the actual Discovery. The set comes with two stands and plaques. It's priced at 799 ringgit and 99 cents. Okay, well, we hope it's worth it. Remember to like and subscribe. So at Bye!
Bye.